So we're going to be talking about fixing a few things on the classic sequencer, the Alesis MMT8. Uh, we're going to replace the memory battery, clean some of the button contacts, and upgrade the operating system via an EPROM chip. So I'm going to start by taking everything apart. Um, make sure to remember where the screws go and also where these ribbon connectors are connected. That's important for when you put it back together later so that everything is lined up. If you put these ribbon connectors back on the wrong way, I do not believe you will fry the device, but you'll get a blank yellow screen um, and it can be a little frustrating sitting there trying to figure it out. So have a look there inside, put this part away. Don't need it. Little classic 1987. So this is the memory battery. Uh, you're gonna wanna remember the polarity, which way is negative and positive. Uh, if you have the black version of this, which is a slightly newer version, the memory battery might look a little different, but it's gonna be the same battery. Uh, so basically you want a 3.6 volt lithium battery. The size doesn't matter. So this is the one I got. It is, as you can see, a, a different size. Um, this is what it'll look like also if you have the, the newer black one. So you're gonna need to solder here, uh, find the leads. If you have a solder pump, it'll help because you can uh, get some of that solder off. I did not. Um, so just loosen it up and sort of slowly work the battery out. As you can see, it sort of pops out. Um, make sure you line up the leads. Um, I think on this version, the middle part is the positive and, and the outside part is negative. Uh, in the round battery um, and it it says on the battery which is positive and negative lead so you go ahead and solder it back in there so you can just take a voltage tester to make sure that the, the solder points actually go to the leads and find the traces on the board and just make sure it beeps now when you change the OS chip, the orientation here is very important. There's a little notch on one end and you want to make sure you remember where that notch is and uh, that the new chip lines up there. When you take out the chip, do be careful. So I use a razor blade that's a little dangerous. You want to really be slow. Do not apply too much pressure because you can crack the, the board or the chip. So you do it very slowly and just sort of slowly work work each end out till it comes loose and you can pull it out with your hand. Sometimes you can pull it out just without anything, just use your hand. But um, after 30 odd years, sometimes they can be a little cranky and don't want to come out. So the new chip, again, just make sure the notch is lined up the same way as the old chip. Um, you may have to bend the legs uh, to get it to go in there. If you do, just use the table um, and sort of push all of the legs at once to avoid bending them. Make sure the fat part of the legs uh, bends so that you don't, you're not bending the little thin part. So now we can put this part of the board back in. Uh, this part of the job's done. Now we're gonna be cleaning the contacts, the button contacts. Um, so we'll take out the other half. Uh, this is where all the contacts are, so screw all these. It's always good to try to organize the screws a little bit so you remember uh, the order they go in. These were all the same here, so it didn't make much of a difference. So you can see the metal parts, these uh, little metal lines, that's where these button contacts here push against. Um, and they're conductive and that's what you know makes the circuit go. Uh, after age, they lose their conductivity. So a little quick fix here is to actually just apply graphite to each of these knobs. So I'm just using a uh, pencil uh, on some paper and rubbing the graphite onto the contact leads. This is a temporary fix. Um, so you can get actual kits to repair this where you can glue on new conductive leads to each of the buttons, which is a more permanent solution. But I just needed to get this to work for a show, so I had to get it, get it done quickly. So once you do that, screw it all back in and put it back together. So you're gonna put these ribbons back on again matching them to the direction they were in before. Um, so 
that everything works correctly. Once you got those back on, then yeah, put the machine back together. Moment of truth. There we go, we have the new OS, you can see, empty part, great. Make sure to save a new patch, name it, save it, turn on and off again to make sure the memory battery is actually working. You're also going to have to push these buttons in and out a few times to get the graphite to work in uh, so that they start, start working fluidly.